parents don't know is that the body keeps score, right? Mm. All these trauma events kind of shape the way we think and feel about time, right? Time. And even the relationship we have with them as well. Money and even how we want to live life. And so you have to figure out, like, this is why rich people tend to get continue to become even more wealthy because they figured out that if I give if I put a dollar into the world, it needs to come back like tenfold. Yeah. Yeah. And not with and without my effort. Right. And so it's actually illegal to build wealth with uh. these with these opportunities if you don't have the education. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you want to watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, all right, let's go back to the video. All right, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. And so I have a great episode for you today, right? So we've, if you're an insider, if you watch the show, if you are a subscriber to the channel, you know that we talk about real estate a lot. Um, and we love real estate because real estate, I don't know any wealthy individuals who have not obtain their wealth using some form of real estate. Even when you think about McDonald's, which is the biggest fast food chain on the planet, their business is actually real estate. And so we've, we've talked about flip, you know, fix and flips. We've talked about wholesaling. We've talked about um, out of state real estate. We've talked about all, of, but we haven't gone granular. We haven't talked about multi-unit, multi-family uh, investments, and we have the Kitty Sisters who are going to, to give us everything about how to become a real estate investor, how to leverage other people's money. Uh, they have a great story uh, that I want to dive into, but we have Miss Palmy and N Nancy Kitty, a.k.a. the Kitty Sisters. How you guys doing hey. today? Yes. Good, we're great. Thank you for having us here. No, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. So, I, you know, I want to really jump into to, um, real estate, the benefits of it, um, how it is, um, uh, you know, really uh, what's going to build the most wealth for people. But before we even start there, um, for those who don't know, who are the Kitty Sisters? Paul, you want to take that? Yeah, so a little bit background on us. So we're like first generation immigrant family. When we moved here, our family, they were my, our parents were really working hard. And the phrase that we kept hearing from them all the time was, I don't have time. Mm. I don't have time, I don't have time. I and don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. I don't I have, have time, time for, for that. Your, mm. your open house. I don't mm. have time to go to your school functions. I don't have time to take you to extracurricular activity. While other kids were doing all that stuff, we were like at home, latchkey kids doing like basically staying by ourselves mm. all day. TVs are, are babysitters. Mm. Like this happened since like one first grade, you know, wow. walk to school yourself, come home yourself. There's food, there's comforts, but there's no one else there. There's three kids, my, our older brother, Nan and I, we're just in the house. Mm. And so we were like, who are we to demand more of our parents' time? They're working super hard. This is a foreign land for them. And they just sacrifice all their time and effort to give us a better life. Mm. So like Palm said, they would miss many monumental moments in our life, open houses, basketball championship games, or even our graduation, right? So they were so busy trading their time for money, like most of the parents. So we thought this is the way of life. And 
many times we feel insignificant, like it doesn't really matter even if we excel in school or even if we get injured or need to be sent to the hospital, they still don't have time. Mm. So, and that became like what we... Our way of life. So as, of life. as adults, we thought, okay, so that is the way to do things. And then the, what parents don't know is that the body keeps score, right? Mm. All these trauma events kind of shape the way we think and feel about time, right? Time. And even the relationship we have with them as well. Money mm. and even how we want to live life. And we're not saying this for to do a sympathy card or to you know like throw a, a pity party. Mm. We're just saying it because um, these experiences shape the way we think yeah. and at also at the same time empower us to, you know, like, Change it. Change it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cycle that happens, and unless you do something dramatic to break it, it will, you will continue to repeat, repeat that generation after generation. Yeah. When but, we were but, but honestly, we kind of fell into the same cycle right, as the them, beginning. right? Because yeah. <laughs> we didn't know. We were still young, so when we were working, we were still like busy we were grinding, in grinding mm. away, trading our time for money, and it just took one major event mm. that completely through our life upside down. And that's when our largest client, when we were in fashion manufacturing, decided mm -hmm. to shut down their store. Just like that, mm -hmm. overnight, we lost 95% of our income. Wow. And we were working together, so we only have one source of income. So we told each other, okay, either we continue the same path, just mm -hmm. find new client, mm -hmm. and then just you know continue to grind away and just live this stressful, unhappy life, or what we believe there should be a different way of life. Yeah. There should be a better way of life and we keep on searching, searching, searching. Yeah. And then that's when we encounter multifamily apartments and that's completely changed our way of life. And, and I, I wanna uh, unpack some of the stuff that you said because a um, couple of things, right? Um, you know, I'm a first generation um, American as well. So my parents are from Haiti. Yeah. Um, and so I understand sort of like that latchkey kid, um, you know, you know, uh, lifestyle, if you will, because my mom, you know, my dad wasn't in the household with us, but my mom, because um, she didn't really speak, you know, good English, um, so she could only work like factory jobs, yeah, right? Exactly. And so while she's working factory jobs and she's like giving her time, 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 me in turn, I had, you know, I, I was raised low income, so I'm, you know, raised in the in the in the streets, if you will, um, and then it got to a point where, you know, I played basketball. I I was I act at one time. I did all these things that nobody in my family ever went to because yeah. they were so busy. Yes. With and so now as a as a parent, right? So I have two children. As a parent, I'm like, no, like I am not ever gonna miss anything that my kids have I, yeah. so we so I'm, I'm I do chaperone I do everything I make sure that I'm present because of this time mm -hmm. and and so I so I, I love I love that you that you said that mm -hmm. um you know as part of the introduction and and, and really just kind of talking about real estate being able to buy you time if you do it right though yeah, yes right exactly. so let, let's let's talk about that a little bit right because um you know I know that, especially in, 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 in our community, um, what is sexy mm. as it relates to real estate is like fix and flip, yeah. um, wholesaling, yeah. and those are like the main two. Like, like we don't really talk about buy and hold that much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really like, all right, fix and flip, uh, you know, wholesale, and it's almost like a badge of honor to like post on social media, like, look, I'm dirty. You know what I'm saying? I'm toilet. <laughs> oh, like, like, like I'm busting up pipes. <laughs> but the truth is, whether you have a nine to five or you do real estate full time, um, fixing and flipping wholesale is still exchanging time for money, yep. right? Yep. So talk a, a little bit about um, the type of real estate that you do. Yeah. How, how are we buying back our time yeah doing it the way you do it. So um, the first thing I wanted to say is like, um, most people, I know a lot of your listeners, they work nine to five, whatever, or they have businesses, even real estate. They're successful. They're successful. So they're spending almost all their time in their, their active income. Yeah. They're not focusing at all. So there's a difference, active income versus wealth. That's the distinction. Multifamily, real estate, multifamily allows you to build wealth over mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. 
you're going to focus on your job. Even as flipping, I don't, we are not proponent of being dirty all the time. I think there's a we, better way to make money. Before we started apartments, we actually, we actually were flip. flipping. We were flipping too. Mm-hmm. So we, but we but, never got but, dirty ourselves. <laughs> yeah. but, but we kind of understood, okay, we're going to in the same ho- rabbit hole again, trading a lot yeah. of time for money. So we're like, again, there must be a better way. So the thing is like with multifamily, the biggest difference is you are not hands-on day-to-day. Mm. You're not managing the property. You're not dealing with all the toilets, termites. You're not dealing with bad tenants that you have to evict. You're not or dealing with collecting rent. Mm. Part, like, you're stepping yourself above that fray. And when you do that, then you can buy back more of your time mm. while still maximizing your profit. Mm. The profit potential for multifamily apartments, either actively in doing like what we do or passively where you're just putting mo- money out there, mm. is significantly more than what you would get to, to, from like generally flipping or wholesaling for sure. And, 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 and when you say multifamily yeah. apartment, you're not talking like four a units. house that has four units. No, no, yeah, no. We're for, talking for, large for, scales. Yeah, for the Kitty Sisters, what we consider multifamily apartment is anything 65 units or above. Mm. Like, yes. Playtime over is the big league. Go. Yeah, and the, big thing, leagues. and the thing is, like, people always feel intimidated. And a lot of time we talk to people, they're like, oh, I want to start small. I wanna, yeah. You are doing way more work with small projects if yeah. you're managing a even one house yourself, you're doing more work than we do to manage and, and, and the so, so, I, so, so I'm not going to lie. Um, that intimidates me still, yeah. which is why I'm excited about this interview because um, so my first time hearing you talk, actually, pardon me, um, was in Cancun, Mexico. With Neo, yeah. With Neo, right? So we were at Neo's Mastermind, and, you know, Neo, you know, is... Um, you know, just talking about stuff that he's doing personally. And I, and I think at the time, I'm pretty sure he has more now, but I think at the time he had like 170 doors or something like that. Yeah. And he's like, I got 170 doors. And, and in my head, I'm like, 170 doors? Like, how? <laughs> you know? And so you you started talking and you started, you know, um, you know, explaining about, you know, how to get into, you know, multifamily apartments. Um, and then we met again, you know, you, we're all in the same mastermind or two masterminds because I'm category Kings as well, but, but in Myron's, um, mastermind. Um, and then we, you know, again, learning a little more about what you do. Um, for me, it intimidates me, Mm -hmm. right? But the more and more I hear you talk about it and you talk about being able, able to, leverage other people's money yeah. in order to get these large scale apartments um that 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 makes that eases the the anxiety yeah. if you will right so for somebody who is brand new yeah. right like they've never they've never invested before ever before um and they have some money mm-hmm. they're like you know what um, banks are failing, right? <laughs> a lot of them, yes. right? They're going to be two banks left. That's it, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, conglomerates. Exactly. Chase, it's going to be conglomerates. American, right, Chase, Chase right. It's going to be, you're going to be chasing, <laughs> right? That's it, right? So banks are failing left and right. Inflation is still high. Mm-hmm. Interest rates still high. People are like, people are losing money on their 401k. They're like, yeah. listen, I got money yeah. and I want to invest. What is their first step if it's if it's to get into multifamily apartments, the very first thing is get educated. Mm. I think education alleviates a lot of the stress and anxiety because now you understand the mechanics of what what we're doing. Yes, and I think a lot of people understand that they want to be in real estate, like you said a little earlier, right? That there's no one that we know of the wealthy people who don't either own or, or s- grew their wealth through real through estate. Real estate. Yeah. So they ca- they understand that. It's just that they're if they're not investing in multifamily apartments because they don't know enough about it. Mm-hmm. And for some of the listener and a lot of people, like even us, we start off as doing single family because we thought, okay, that's the way of life. We were taught like, okay, when we may have some extra money, we're just going to own rental. But as you can see, like, the more you start owning um, rental, sometimes they actually start owning you because mm. the tenants will be calling you during your holidays and stuff like that. So gradually, like, gradually people are going to move towards multifamily because they're like, this is too hands-on. Yeah. I want to have financial freedom. I want to have that time freedom. So the first step, like Palm said, and it's kind of gradually that they're going to step from single family and they're going to want to enter multifamily. Or some people who are super smart, way smarter than us, they just jump into multifamily for us and they're going to be like, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm into this. Like, what do I do? Well, first of all, like Palm said, 
I want, you need to get educated. Yep. And right? the second thing is leverage. So there's so, there are several layers of leverage. Um, team. Mm -hmm. So who's your team? Property management is a team. Syndicators, like active people like us, that's your team. You need to find the right person. Um, lawyer, CPAs, tax attorney, all those people are your teammates. Mm -hmm. you, don't have, you can be new to multifamily, but your team cannot be. Mm -hmm. So that's at the first level. Then the next level is tools. What are the um, analyzer tools? What are some of the tools you can use to track your investments? All things that can help make, make this process easier, not so like um, time consuming. Then there's time. Time. Like, how do we, what do we use to leverage time? Other people's money, um, tax advantages. All these things are leverage points that you can use. I think what we love to leverage more than a lot of stuff is Mr. IRS. Mm. Yeah. We get to, like, when you're in, investing in multifamily, there's a massive tax benefit. Mm. And that's what we love. Like, you know, like to make great income, invest in multifamily, and get to pay the least amount of taxes. Mm. I love that. And, and so, you know, does 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 investing in multifamily apartments is it the same um, like how someone would invest in a single family? Right. For instance, uh -huh. if um, you have a deal that um, I invest in a sixty-five yeah. unit apartment, yeah. mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have all of the money, mm -hmm. right? And so I get one percent. Yeah. Right, I have enough yeah, yeah. for one percent of that sixty-five unit apartment. Right, right? now at one percent, um, with all of the rents collected, do I get one percent of the cash flow? Is that how it works? Yes. So, okay, really good point. Uh, I'll get to that. The first distinction is when you buy a single family home, you have to personally sign the loan. Yes. When you invest with us, you're investing as an equity partner. Mm. So there, but you don't sign on the loan. Mm. So you're you don't not have signing a on a forty million dollar loan liability. That's not on your balance. Mm. Like that's on ours. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the major distinction. There's no personal liability because you're a limited partner. Mm. Single family home, someone falls on it. Mm. We live in a litigious society; they can sue. Wow. Right. So you can, unless you have really good asset protection, you're more vulnerable. Yep. In single family. Okay, so that's the first part. So that's like a major distinction. Single family home also is valued by comps. So if your neighbors comparable. are selling comparable, so if your neighbors are selling their property below what you think is market value, mm -hmm. you probably can't get the um, the appraisal value to be that high. Right. So you have limited control over the value. Multifamily, the value derives from the income it produces. Mm. So we have all the active, the manager of the property, asset manager. We have all the control over how much income how much expense the property is going to generate. Mm. So therefore, we can control the value of the property. Wow. So, so if, I, if I understand you correctly, regardless of, let's say, what the rent is in the in, in, in an area, yep. um, for a single family home, the value is based on what the last person sold it for. Pretty so much. if the last person was, oh, you know, in, in financial stress. stress and they sell it at a discount, now that affects the value of your place. Yeah. Uh, when you do multifamily apartments, it's really based on it's like it's like a business. It's, yeah, it's based yes. on the income that's coming in, yes, regardless of what everything. It else could be a, it could be an abandoned building across the street. Yeah, yeah, right, worth nothing. <laughs> worth nothing. But you have a building and it's cash flowing yeah. based on what the rents are, yeah. and that's what the value is. Yeah, wow. yes, and wow. that's why it's so important to pick who you want to invest with. Yeah. You have to pick the one who actually know how to execute those business plans, yeah. how to increase the income, how to reduce the expenses so that you can have um, net operating income like at the highest level. And that's wow. how you, that's how the yeah. and then, like, commercial value is determined. To circle determined. back to what you said about the equity percentage, you're totally right. So yeah. as a passive investor on the passive side, you get to make money um, on both the cash flow that the property produces, and also we will sell this property typically in three to five years. Mm. Whatever gain we make, you get a portion of that that is directly uh, um, in alignment with your percentage of ownership. Wow. So you get to participate on the upside. Wow. And, okay. and typically, not a promise because th there's no guarantees, but typically we try to go for about 100% return overall. What does that mean? So like if you, it's like kind of having your own like virtual... ATM machine where you put in a, a dollar and it spit out two dollars mm. while you're sleeping, enjoying life, and just living and yeah. raising your family. Yeah. Wow. And then spend time at three your to kids five years. Events. Right. And, 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 and I mean, I, I, love, I love this model, right? Because a couple of things, you know, to unpack is number one, 
uh, the liability aspect yeah. of it, right? The fact that um, you are a limited, li you're, you're limited, partner. limited partner, which means that, right, you still own a percentage of this corporation. Yeah. You're not signing on it personally, mm -hmm. and so your liability is limited, yep. but you get to take advantage of the upside. Yep. You, get, you get cash flow, yep. and when that property is sold, you get the profit. You get the profit. And on top of that, there's a cap on how many you can own in single family, right? Mm. I think there's like 10, 10 loan for, per person. You can and then a couple 10. is like 20. Right. I mean, if you have money more to invest more than 20, you're cap. Right. Right? But in multifamily apartments, you, it's not cap. You have 10,000 units. You're not signing on any of the mm. loans. So there's no limitation to growing your wealth. Wow. There's no ceiling. So let me, let me, let me get that right. So um, somebody invests in a single family home. Mm -hmm. If they borrow the if money. If they borrow the money, um, banks will only lend them up to 10. Yeah. And if there's a married couple, they could get 20. 20. Yep. What if they decided to do it through an LLC or a company? Same thing. Same thing. For most, for the most part, single family homes, the banks, they, they don't even want you to buy through an LLC. You would buy through your personal name and right. then do like a quick claim deed to right. an LLC. Because for the for most part, businesses will not have the type of credit to buy a home. Yep. Wow. So it's, you're, most of the time, it will be in your personal name. They need you to be the, the, the collateral. Yes, right? like they will cross collateralize with those, your, those, those rentals with whatever assets you have. Mm. And that's where you increase your risk. Yep. If you don't pay rent, you have to pay. If you can't afford to pay, like during COVID, there's a moratorium. Yep. People like in New York City, for example, <laughs> California, like small landlords were like suffering because Absolutely. going through foreclosures because people didn't have, they didn't get evicted because. It was COVID, right? But they had to pay the mortgage. The banks didn't they, say right. They still had, there the, wasn't there wasn't a moratorium. There was, for landlords, but the yeah. but the repercussion of a moratorium for landlords yeah. means that you pretty much won't be able to get a loan, like future loans, because mm. they make it very um, wow. like prohibitive for wow. landlords. Wow. Yeah. And so, how do you? Um, and this is just a personal question yeah. that I have now. How do you leverage, or can you still leverage? Um, your ownership in multifamily apartments. Yeah. So, like, let's say, for instance, um, you know, like, a as a real estate investor, yeah. I could leverage the properties I own already to get other loans. It, it shows that I'm a seasoned investor yeah. and, you know, I can get hard money loans, this mm -hmm. things of that nature. As I'm investing in um, these multifamily apartments, um, it can I leverage... Yeah you know, the fact that I own these properties. In you any can. Way. Okay. So the, the thing is, like, we always tell people that they need to have a personal financial statement and a schedule of real estate own updated at least every quarter. Mm. Personal financial statement, in this case, different from banks, is that we consider um, these investments as assets. Mm. You know how banks sometimes they're like, this is a liability because yep. you owe money on it. Yep. But for, for us, we don't look at it that way. And a lot of lenders who lend specifically for multifamily do not value, do not think that it's a liability, it's a liability. Mm. It's an asset because it's income producing. Right. So for for people who are passive investing, that net worth will continue to grow pretty significantly. They'll see a good jump in their net worth. Mm. So therefore, if they need to go out and get a loan on their own for something else, like we have doctors who are investors who need to go get loans for like they're buying their homes or whatever. They're, they're always asking for an updated um, valuation from us so mm. that they can increase their net worth. Wow, wow, and wow. Active, if you're actively doing this, your net worth can jump tenfold um, within like a couple years. Wow. If you're passing it, goes Like, what does it take to start, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, and, and, and I, I, I want to dive into sort of like the deals too, yeah. right? And how, um, you know, you guys got started and yeah. things of that nature. But for somebody who is like, oh, I love this. I want to get into multifamily apartments. Like, what does it take to start? Like, how do I, like, how do I find the Kitty Sisters? <laughs> right? I mean, now you guys are lucky, right? Because you, because we're, we're on the yeah. show. But if, but if somebody wanted to like find syndicators or find yeah. people who have access to these deals, um, how do they find them? Uh -huh. Um, and then what is the minimum, like, like, like how much do you have to invest to yeah. get in? 
Yeah, so there are many resources to find um, people. Like you can check out, like you know, blog, podcast, YouTube channel, real estate events, meetups, meetups, like local meetups and stuff like that. Like for us, our journey or we, referral as well. Like and and referral is the big one. Like our journey started as passive investors. That's how we got started and kind of get to know like people and literally like the best place to start is being passive so that you kind of know if you're actually interested to do active too mm. right like mm. we don't know and you get paid along the way to, to like, learn to learn yeah. so like we lived in LA and we were in an LA bubble but our first passive investments were in Texas and that exposed us to a totally new market and then, yeah and then, and then the syndicator o- and then we invest in other areas right as well, and then right? the syndicator then taught us gave us market reports mm like industry reports that we didn't even know were available and mm. taught us like, look, this is what you look for. This is why this is a good area. Mm. And we can take that knowledge and then like, like Nan said, first decide like, it is work to be active, yeah. right? Passive is super easy. Yeah. You find someone that you it's like, know, it, like, it's and good, trust. It's good for someone one. who's like making great active income and you're like, how do I grow my wealth? Mm-hmm. What is my next step? I don't yeah. want to own single family. I don't want to deal with tenant toilets, termite and trash. Like that would be a great step. And the minimum, it depends. Like some, some syndicators start with 50K, some start with 100 and then we have seen $300,000. It really depends on your comfort level. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But the, tr- the what we've discovered is, um, the higher minimum, the, the more quality, the more quality investors you have. Mm, okay. They'll have less questions because they're more sophisticated in investing. They understand yeah. what's happening yeah. because absolutely there's real risk, right? Yeah. Because like in any investments, mm-hmm. there's always real risk. Yeah. Either like we've talked about a lot on our podcast, either um, the asset class risk or the operation risk. Mm-hmm. So if if that's why we like a higher minimum, so that if you if this is not your only source of money, like you can afford to lose this, then then you should be in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And 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 so how, so how do you though? Um, there's a lot of people who claim yeah. to know stuff and to do stuff, right? So, um, you know, I had a um, a gentleman who I you know familiar with. And they would tell, they were just talking about how many, like, oh, I got the, this amount of doors, yeah. and I got this, I got that. And then I, was, and, and and you know, as a you know former banker, like sometimes I play dumb just to <laughs> let people go with their stories. But as a former banker, I'm like asking questions, and the math just wasn't mathing for me. I'm like, wait, well, that doesn't make any sense. And what it looked like was he worked with a syndicator and was referring people to that syndicator and then somehow was taking uh, claim for every t- for yeah. like referral claims as if it was his door. So I still couldn't make sense out yeah. of it to the point where I was like, I pr- I'm probably not gonna be investing yeah. with this guy, right? Um, how do you, like, like for instance, I will be doing business with you, yeah. right? Because I have a lot of friends mm-hmm. We have done business with you, <laughs> right? And so I don't need to, um, uh, you know, obviously there's, there's some, there's vetting, but I don't really need to vet you because I know people who are actively making money and yeah. so so they've done the work or yeah. whatever the case may be. Um, and they, so they could kind of vouch. Mm-hmm. But like for, um, for you know, new somebody people. who's just, who doesn't have, yeah. who's not as cash, who doesn't yeah. have <laughs> access, yeah, yeah. right? To millionaire friends who could like vouch like what? What is someone looking for to know that this is? You know what? This is a good deal. Yeah. And I should be doing business with these people. And that's why we say education yeah. is important, right? Because once you get educated, you're gonna understand the numbers. While, um, like by understanding numbers, then you can invest more confidently. Yeah. And but he, but apartment syndication is really about betting on the jocker, which is the, the people, jockey. the jockey yeah. who the people who actually um. Who's behind the deal? The so deals. like syndicators are gonna be like, you can have two exact deals, but the one who actually pay attention and care and actually wanna operate the deal correctly will will do well. So there what, are number, there what, are. what you have to do if you're getting started, the first thing is like, do not invest with anyone who you just met. Mm. That's like, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but people actually get really allured by the returns, by what was, was promised, and yeah. they jump a little bit too far ahead. I would study them. If for us, for us, we have a lot of social media content. We mm. have stuff on YouTube. We have Instagram. Listen to what we say. Yeah. Your instinct, you're really smart, successful people. Your audience, they have that gut instinct. They understand like what makes sense. Like If it's too good to be true, yeah. don't do it. 
and just ask for referrals. And then number two would be like vet them, yeah. right? Like when you first meet them, you get to know them, you get to consume their content or even just schedule a call with them and see how they are and just follow them and, and, then, um, and then really, really have that like confidence. confidence yeah. And then like also do micro investments. Mm. So we understand multifamily investing is not a $5,000 project. It's yeah. at least 50, 75, 100,000, right? Yeah. But for the people who can afford it, can afford to play this game, 100,000 is considered a micro investment. Mm. Because I don't want a million dollars from you, Ash Cash. Like I wouldn't take it. Mm. But you give me $100,000 to invest, you can see how am I like, if there's issues, am I responsive? Yep. If you have questions, because there are syndicators who will just go MIA. Like mm. they, they're like your friends, they'll call you, they'll yeah. have wine and dine the minute they get your money. Yeah. They're, out, they're like, you ask them any hard questions, they don't reply. Mm. And then you can also ask for their past referral, like, referral or case study, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, like how have they done? Who are the people who, can give me a couple of names of people that you've, you've done this with and are successful. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, uh, I hear syndicator. Yeah. I hear jockey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, who are all involved mm. in a transaction for multi-family apartments? Um, when I hear syndicator, mm -hmm. um, I hear uh, connect. Yeah. Yes. Right. So like, I hear like this is the connect. This is the person that has access to the money. Has mm -hmm. access to the deal. Yes. Has access to the investor, and then, right? They syndicate. Yeah. They bring. Yeah. They bring all we of these people the together. Yes. Right? They pull these resources together, right? Because the the bank, the person who has the money, um, the person who has the deal, who owns the property, the investors, they may not. They they, they live in different other. worlds. Yeah. They're in different spaces. They don't know each other, and so the syndicator is the person that goes out and, and says, you know what, I'm, let me connect you. I'm going to bridge the gap between yep. Yep. these I love, people. I love how you actually That's describe. That's a new way of saying it. I am, yeah. We're going to steal that. And you know, like, that. top, <laughs> like, great syndicator actually get better deals. Yeah. There can be a lot of syndicators, but they may not get good deals. And yeah. that not good deals mean they may not get a great return, yeah. right? So. so, like, for us, for our most um, recent deal that we just closed, $77 million deal. Whoa. So that happened. You said, wait, wait, wait. You said that lightly. $77 million. Yeah, it becomes, Sheesh. it's just, you know, just digits. zero digits yeah, at yeah, this yeah. point. So <laughs> we, we closed previous to $77 million. We closed $71 million. Yeah, so basically, wow. like, on a $77 million deal, the brokers have to have extreme confidence that you can close as the buyer. Mm. Because and we have to rate $38 million. 30, yeah, right? and so that only comes from previous relationships with like, for instance, this broker, we're new to him, but mm. we, we worked with, we've transacted with his colleague in different cities, mm. which we, we, we raised 34 millions and we closed that $71 million. So basically, he, we're like, we're new to you, but reach out to this guy. Mm. Reach out to this guy, because he, he can vouch that we're easy to work with. Yep. We can close the deal. We can close the deal. We can keep our words. We keep our words, even when capital market was crazy. Mm -hmm. And so the interest rate was climbing. So like right? that connector, that was probably, and with the lender as well, we've transacted like eight times with this one lender. Like mm. over $200 million. Yeah. So to have the relationships we do, like real estate is a relationship business. Yeah. Only the people who have the best relationships make make the most money because yeah. they get the best deals. Yeah. So 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 take 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 me back, right? Um, because your first deal was yeah. how like much? Six point nine. Six point nine million. So the million. very first time very first you time. got you guys did multifamily apartment, six point nine million. Yep. Um, because you because because I keep hearing you you're raising these funds, yeah. right? Does that mean that? You know, the Kitty sisters did well for themselves, had $6.9 million, and said, hey, I want to buy this building. Yeah. How, does that, how did that, that work? That would... was not the case. No, <laughs> no, no, we didn't yeah. come from that. So basically, in, that was our first deal. We started out with zero connections. We didn't have any um, Rolodex of anyone with money, but we had the belief that we can raise money. Wow. And so we, 
the minute and, the, we, and then but we we were so honest to our investors yeah. that yeah. we are new to multifamily but our team aren't new like the property management team has been in business for like 30 years like the syndic- um, the syndicator lawyers and everyone else they're more they're experienced we're newer yeah. but but we're not new to real estate and we're not new to business mm. so so you so 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 you guys that did real estate prior to yeah. this the syndication yeah i mean we Not did even. we did flipping and then we um hold or held our own single family it gotcha. wasn't massive but yeah. it gave us some experience and then when we would go to meetups and stuff and, and and again the investor they invest because these are like they do micro investment with us yeah mm-hmm. like they're not investing millions of dollars with us right. on their first deal so they're like you know what i love real estate i want to get into multi-family, multifamily yeah. and i believe that they have that execution certainty that they will not lose my money. Yeah. I'm going to do some investment with them and see how it goes. And do, do you have to have money? Like, can, can, I, can I just say, you know what, I want to become a syndicator and not put any money into a deal? Or do you have to put money into a deal? You have to have some money and well, skin, some skin in the game. First of all, investors, passive investors, love us to have skin in the game. But second of all, we love to make money too. Right, 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 <laughs> Like, right, right. we want to create our wealth. And then once we make money, where do we put it? We reinvest it in our own deal because yeah. we want it to grow yeah. but you know but as passive investor it's kind of like you need to start with having money because the whole game is having your money makes it makes baby for you but but but, but here's a question though so is there what's the benefit though of um being a syndicator yeah. It like you you don't get paid. You get paid. Okay. You get paid. So okay. there's fees and you get like equity percentages. So there are some fees. Typical standard fees would be like acquisition fee yep. that you bought, like acquiring the property, asset management fee. Sometimes there's refinance fee or disposition fee, something okay. like that. So you get fees, but the the kicker is once the property um, does well and it's sold, yeah, that's when you make big bucks. Mm. So you get an equity. So basically, the L, the limited partners, as as the person who signed on the loan up um, up front, like maybe even a million dollars of earnest money, like a lot of money up front, mm-hmm. putting the deal together, like you said, all those pieces we have to combine, right? Yeah. They give us uh, equity in the property. Mm-hmm. So typically, it's at least twenty percent. Okay. So twenty thirty, yeah. Yeah, so 20 to 30% of the equity raise, yeah. they give us to us as shares in the company. Because mm-hmm. we're trading time and grinding away. And then once we do really, really well, manage the property in three to five years when we sell, we also, we also benefit from that mm. 20, mm-hmm. 30% right. equity. Because you put your money in there. And this is, they also gave us equity. Mm. So they're giving so, us 20%. So, so you're, so you're going to make money off of the, the money that you put in, right? Yeah. So let's say, for instance, the $6.8 million deal, yeah. how much did you guys put in? So um, I, I think I co- collectively, how much was that? Like a, Two, 3% of it. Yeah, so uh, that one was a small deal. So maybe 300K or something. Okay. Yeah. So, so because the raise was three, two, three million. Three million. Yeah. So okay. we put two, 3% of that. And then, and then so if the 10%. raise was 3 yeah. million. Oh, 10%. <laughs> So 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 the why was the raise three million? Why wasn't the raise six million? Where did the other three oh, million so come from? Six million, the rest came from loan. So we got a loan got, from Freddie oh, Mac. Oh, yeah. got it, got it, got it. So, and insiders, I hope you stand with me. I'm trying. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 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 doing the math in my head. So, six point nine million dollar yeah. deal. Um, I think leverage was around sixty plus five, percent. Sixty five percent. percent. So, let's, so let's say. You know, let's say, you know, $6.8 million deal, uh, Chase Bank decide. I'm just it using was Freddie it Mac. As a, was Freddie it? Mac. Freddie Mac. All right. So let's say Freddie Mac decides to give you $3 million. They like this deal. Yeah. Yep. Looks good. They say, you know what? We're not going to give you the whole $6.8 million. 6.9. We're going to give you $3.8 yeah. million. Yep. And then you have to figure out the rest Correct. of the $3 million. Yes. So now you have $3 million that you have to raise. Mm-hmm. You say we're gonna put in three hundred thousand ourselves, right. right? And so now we have two point seven million dollars that we have to raise. Mm-hmm. So now you start going to people yeah. and say, "Hey, I got this deal, right? Yeah, yeah. This deal, this building is such mm-hmm. and such place, six point eight million dollars. Like, like there's a presentation. I'm assuming yeah. that yes. you now make, yes, right? And then, and then now you're asking people for money right we're actually giving them opportunity to grow their wealth so we're not asking them. so we're not yeah. it's, it's not an uh, ask it's also more, it's more like they want to be in yeah. this deal because their money is losing value in the bank yeah so the right? other thing i wanted to clarify is like 
due to SEC regulations, yeah. you have to have pre-existing relationships before you you attempt to raise money from people. So it's not like I go off the street and like, mm. hey, shot, you have you have money. Can I, you want to invest with me? Yeah. Like we we do five hundred six B. So therefore, now, yeah. So. If, in that circumstance, it wasn't like I just met you today and I just raised money for you. You, you have to build that relationship gotcha. ahead of time. Yes, gotcha. and those relationships, they understand that their money sitting in a bank is either going to be eaten away by inflation or taxation. Gotcha. So the money is looking for a place to put. It's, it's producing yield. Right, yeah. right. Okay, got it now. And so, um, do, so do you have to be an accredited investor yeah. in order to... So Get because it. of 506B, you can take... And what's 506B? So it's under Reg D, five, it's a regulation by the SEC. Basically, yep. it, the goal is to protect investors' interests in like private placement, like not publicly traded yep. on the stock market. Gotcha. So they want to protect investors. They don't want us to take people who are only like $5,000 and like if they lose this money, they, they, they don't understand what they're getting into. Yep. Essentially, what it means is like you can, you can afford to lose money. Got it. Got like, it. Okay. And so accredited investors, you can take as many as you want. We are all allowed to also take 35 sophisticated investors. Okay. They may not meet the, the criteria for income, uh, income or, or net worth. worth. Or an accredited, but they've studied real estate. They've been mm. in real estate. They, they, own, they rentals. own rentals. They understand gotcha. what's happening. So, so, so quickly, a accredited investor yeah. is based on their net worth or income, uh, the the amount of money they make, and then that, and because, based on that, they you know that, that criteria. The SEC says you are accredited. Yeah. You could afford to lose. You so know you what can, you're doing. You know what you're doing. You could play this game. Yep. Yes. Yep. If you will. Yep. Uh, a sophisticated investor doesn't necessarily have to have yeah. the net worth or the income, income, but as long as they have the education, mm -hmm. like Nan mentioned earlier, yeah. like having that education, yep. as long as they have that education, yeah. they're a sophisticated investor and they could also... Correct. Invest, got it. Yes, and there's many sophisticated investors who invest in multifamily apartments and became a credit investor. Mm. Because of the net worth. Right. And keep growing. Wow, right? wow, So now wow. all of a sudden after, like we know we have an investor who's a repeat investor. Yep. She started out investing because she was afraid that she was going to lose her job. Right. But she fortunately never lost her job, but kept yeah. investing. So and now she became a credit, a investor. credit investor. So, So that's an interesting point. Cause I, cause I, I want, I want, I want to unpack this. Cause I don't want nobody to miss this. Right. Interesting point is this is why, and I've been saying this for years, yeah. but like just now mm -hmm. I had a light bulb mm -hmm. moment because I've been saying that as a, cause I've been a financial educator for over 20 years, right? Teaching people how to change their mindset, manage money better. And for me, it was because I wanted people to understand how money works, mm. right? Like, I need you to understand how money works so you could build wealth, so you could create financial freedom. But at, it was at this moment with the Kitty Sisters Yay. that I actually learned that it's not only about understanding how money works, you could be left out of wealth building opportunities if you don't have this education. Yeah, definitely. Because if somebody, right, let's say, you know, someone like myself who grew up low income um, and, and I'm, or, or, or somebody watching who is like, listen, I want to build wealth and I could, I could do the slow grind. I could figure it out myself or whatever the case may be. But there's opportunities where I can exponentially grow my wealth. Mm -hmm. But if I don't have the net worth, if I don't have the income, mm -hmm. then these opportunities are not even afforded to me. Yeah. And knowing that like 99.9% .9 of people who are wealthy do it through real estate, mm -hmm. I need to be a sophisticated investor. Like it's, it's actually, I would say like illegal because SEC is like mm -hmm. a government yeah, yeah. governing body. Yeah, you go to so jail. You could go to jail. Like the, I, yeah. like, we know people who go to jail for violating SEC rules. Yeah. And so it's actually illegal to build wealth with, uh, these, with these opportunities if you don't have the education. Yeah, wow. Wow. Didn't think of it yes. that way. Wow. Yeah. And you know, on top of that, you can build wealth by being active investors as well. Mm -hmm. Like when we talk about having money make money, but for someone who wants to become active investor, 
and then become passive investor. That can be wealth. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have millions of dollars to start being active investor as well. You can pull together resources, mm -hmm. have that connection, be like, us. be like us, or be part of us and join a team mm -hmm. who can help bring them together. You can grow your wealth that way too. And as and honestly, 10x is easier than 2x mm. sometimes. So, so, so let, let, let's go back, right? Because I'm, I mean, I've been so because <laughs> and, that, and that, that was one of the reasons why I thought it was important to bring you onto the show because my goal always for my insiders specifically uh, is to always just give them opportunity, like open up their mind yeah. um, to what's available from a, a wealth building standpoint. Um, but I know that, you know, people are, um, you know, skeptical a lot of times as it, as it relates to wealth. Um, and they might be making sort of like excuses for themselves, mm -hmm. right? Um, so take me back, yeah. right? Take me back to like the Kitty Sisters, right? Because the Kitty Sisters were, at, you know, part of royalty, heir to the throne, <laughs> grew up with money, and then yes, just right. used that yes. money to now build wealth. That's yeah. that's the story. Yeah, they think that. <laughs> they think that. Yeah. Tell me the real story. <laughs> I mean, when we lost our fashion business, we had we had in we had savings, but the reason we had savings because we didn't manage to outspend what we made. Yeah, but take me before the fashion business, right? Yeah. Because like, you know, as um, you know, were you guys born here in America? We we came here when we were little. So basically, okay. our parents sacrificed so much to give us a good life, but at the same time, their life, because they didn't, un they didn't learn about this thing about financial freedom, mm. they have a roller coaster life. Mm. And this could be so many of people who are like, hey, as entrepreneurs, there's nothing guaranteed Well, you make the same monthly income every single month. Mm. Sometimes you may and sometimes you don't, right? Yeah. So for them, they're entrepreneurs. So their, their life has just been roller coaster. And when you say roller coaster, Good times, bad, bad times, time, good time. money up, money, money down. All the time. All like, the time, all, right? Like our lives and have here, been like that. And it's here's like the thing. They're great at making income. But yeah. what they're not good at is producing wealth. Yeah. So once they make great income, like mm, so many people, good, it goes right? away. It good goes away. Yeah. Because like Robert Kiyosaki said, like there's poor people, there's middle class people, and there's rich people. Yeah. So we were the kind of middle class, but yeah. but okay, so the, let's go back first. Poor people, they think that, hey, money is there to pay their bills, mm -hmm. right? And then the middle class people is, hey, they have a better life, and they think that their mindset is that- Build better credit. Build better credit. To go buy stuff. To go buy stuff. And that's kind of like our family. We're like, yeah, kind of like middle class. Mm -hmm. We have some money, yet we spend it all. We don't build wealth. We don't invest in, they don't invest in real estate. So- we're not like the rich people where, hey, when I make $1, $10, $100, $100,000, $1, dollars I have to grow that money. Yep. Like, they didn't have that mentality, and that's why they keep on having roller coaster. Because as entrepreneur, again, like, sometimes they it's make It's not predictable. Yeah. Right. They sometimes, like, like Palm said, right, yeah. like before earlier, they, even though we have the right to write our own paycheck, but we don't because we always have to reinvest into yeah. the business. Yeah. And that's what our parents have done throughout their whole entrepreneurship. Yeah. Make money spend the money, invest in the business. Yeah. And when they became obsolete, when they are no longer desire or they're, you know, like they're... they're yeah, the business changed, the yeah. landscape changed. Or even like digital marketers, right. like you put so much money in Facebook ad and something happened. With oh my algorithm God. and it doesn't work. Over, over like, the net, like in, in, in a flash, Instance. all the money that you were relying on yeah. on Facebook switches and now, you gotta, now you're scrambling to figure yeah, things out. Yeah, that's why it's so important to build wealth because yeah. when you have the chance so that when these kind of things happen, your, your lifestyle doesn't change. Doesn't change. Especially yeah. if people like us, we yeah. came from nothing. Yeah. You don't want to go back to... This, you definitely don't want your kids <laughs> to be on the streets. Never, yeah. And so it's like, we know that... So that's, um, that's how our background was. We didn't come from money. We yeah. definitely didn't come from money. And our parents' lives were like this. They'll yeah. make money, they'll lose money, make money. And it's like, so trading time for money for them wasn't the answer because if it was, they would constantly have money. Yeah. So it actually, time doesn't equal to money. Yeah. Mm. And that's what we thought that was time equal to money. But yeah. no, that's not it. That's yeah. not it. No. Yeah. And so yeah. you have to figure out, like... This is why rich people tend to get con continue to become even more wealthy because yeah. they figured out that if I give if I put a dollar into the world, it needs to come back like tenfold. Yeah, 
Yeah. And not with and without my effort. Right. right. And for those who don't have money, find a way to use other people. Use find money. that to find that one dollar right. by using other people's money. I kept wanting to bring up your background. Yeah. Because, um, first of all, there's a similarity yep. almost in your parents' story and your story, mm. where you know your, your you know your dad has a business. Mm -hmm. Business is doing well. Yeah. Something like this one catastrophic yes. event happens, loses everything, has to start over, right? But he kept going. But he kept going. He kept going back to the same business. Yep. But we, because we learned from them, like, there must be a better way. Right. There must we be a like, different way. Not, and, so, like, and, so, and then we keep on searching, searching. Right. So now you guys have front row seat, seat and you see that. Mm. Um... You guys start a fashion business. Business is doing very, very well. Yes. This one catastrophic event, yes. just like your parents, happened. Yes. That, you know, sort of shatters the business. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you guys were dibbling and dabbling in other things as well. Yes. That sort of allowed you to um, now go in this direction of, of, of building that yeah. wealth. And I, and, and so, and so I, I, you know, I wanted to bring that up because I feel like, you know, a lot of people, you know, and, and, and you guys articulated that very eloquently where, you know, there are the poor people who are, you know, just working for money. Yeah. I work for money. I'm going to buy things, work for money, buy things. You got the middle class people who are doing better. Mm -hmm. Um, they buy more things. Right, but they buy more <laughs> things, and they're reliant on their income. Yeah, yes, right? yes. And so they're, they're reliant on their income. And honestly, when you think about digital, when you think about AI, mm -hmm. like there are things happening that, in my opinion, are going to wipe out the middle class yes. at some point. Yeah. Right? Because, because I, I think, I think it who said, um, but but I, I want to say it was, it was probably the Fed. It was somebody that said that AI is going to get rid of 300 million jobs? Is that... Is, I, I, wow. I, I, think, I, think, I think that I read somewhere that, that arts, artificial intelligence mm. is going to get rid of 300 million jobs. Uh, oh, my God. 20 or 200 million or 20 million. I forget the stats, but are, are in the U.S., right? So you got millions of people who are, who are, who are going to lose their job. Yeah. And then worldwide, it's, it's, it's this number. The one thing that... AI can't take it take a, take away is the ownership of real assets. Right, right, right. Yes. And so the truth is, if you're in a position to make money right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you should be finding a way to have that yes. money transferred into real assets. Yes. Yes. Right? Um, and have other people work on it. Exactly. You don't have to deal with, you don't have to make all the decisions. You don't have to go to the boardroom meeting. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. Have the expert do what they do and you, you just live and your life. Like circling back to our feeling, like the moment that we lost that income from fashion, we actually felt like shame on us. Mm. How did we not see this? So, was a, so, 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 so you guys had... Uh, the fashion business, how big did you build it? It was, we grossed like, at the end, we grossed about like 4.3 million. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't small. Right, it, we right, we right. had a very nice lifestyle. We yep. were spending lavishly. And it was just two of us. Yeah. We didn't have any employees. But like, wow, just two. Yeah. Yes. Generating millions of dollars. Because we leveraged. But, but and we started with $2,000 bank account. Wow. Yeah, and we borrowed her money. I didn't even know. In three years. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. So the we were like, why are we so stupid to keep repeating the same mistake? Right. We saw them do this, and yet we fell in the same trap. Right. And so that's like, never again. Like, that's not happening. We, something is obvious. There are people out there who's doing really, really well and yeah. aren't working as hard as us. Yeah. What and are they doing? And, and honestly, when we were trading a lot of time for money, we, we felt like we didn't even give ourselves permission to even rest, even if we just like for even a 15-minute rest or a nap, because we thought we don't have what it takes. We're not... We're, we just like we're not ambitious enough. Mm. We're we don't have like we what don't it takes yeah to be to or we're not doing it right. Like we actually gave ourselves so much guilt, yeah. even though like we we should be able to like we to relax. We want people to be able to 
control their time, yeah. their finances, and their future, right? Yeah. But we were living in the life where, like, we couldn't control anything. We were making great income, but we can't even rest yeah. because we always have to be on call and always have to answer to other people's schedules, their calendar. We don't have our own calendar. We take holidays based on when they say is okay. Mm. When our customers are on our holidays. On holiday, we get to go on holidays. Right. Yeah. You know, we're making money, but we, we can't. And, like, the our customers would literally make us feel we canceled like a whitewater rafting trip like a day before because she was like you need to be in you need to be in your office wow even though we don't produce here even we though produce we're in like, asia we're like wow. even though it was handled but she didn't feel comfortable not having us in our office in wow. case she needed us like stuff like that happened all the time right, and right, i and right. i think it's so, so when you think you work for yourself you actually don't you work for you just got your stuff another job, Absolutely. like another mean boss who can. As a multi millionaire, yeah, yeah, still, a mean boss. You still got a mean boss, and right? that's why so many successful entrepreneurs, like high level entrepreneurs, wants to start real estate yeah. because that's the way you get to actually control your own time, your own schedule, and you have like you kind of built an army of like money's making money for you. Yeah. So that that's yeah. like the wealth part. That's yeah. like right now, focus on your active income because that's where you're you've learned how to make a lot of money. Yeah. Like the book from um, The Richest Man in Babylon. Mm -hmm. Take at least 10%. Pay yourself first. Yeah. Pay yourself first does not mean go buy a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. It means take that money and go invest in real assets mm -hmm. that will grow your wealth. At yeah. some point in the future, hopefully not too long, your, that wealth would actually be generating more income than, than your act active. Mm -hmm. At that point, now you can focus on growing your wealth instead yeah. of focusing on yeah. your active. You can and work or you don't work. Yeah, no, no, I love that. And, and then, so, so, talk, so uh, two, 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 two points that I want to make sure that we cover um, is one, the tax benefits mm, yes. of being a real estate investor. Can you talk about that? And yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Like so that's seriously, like a, like a lot changer. of, yeah, a lot of investors invest, like high net worth individual invest because of this major tax benefit. Paul, you want to explain so how to So basically get it? in 2017, um, Trump passed the um, Tax Cut Jobs Act, mm -hmm. and that allowed for this thing called bonus depreciation to happen before depreciation is linear like every year 27 and a half years whatever the, the value of the property mm -hmm. um, minus a land cost you get to deduct that from like your home it's mm -hmm. like maybe a couple thousand dollars a year yeah single family home so multi-family we weren't uh, we weren't allowed to push all the there's things that are like um like real prop personal properties like light fixtures the yeah. floor the building itself anything we the government now, said there's useful life for everything. Yeah. And then the, the things are five care. and 15 years. Now we're able to push all that into year one of ownership. So the deduction is larger. Mm. And because we're only holding these properties for three to five years, we're able to maximize the deduction because we're not holding it for 15. We're mm. holding it for a shorter period of time. So essentially for this year, the deduction is 80%. Mm. Essentially, like the VAT, whatever the depreciable amount is, you get to take 80% of that. And that could be millions of dollars. Wow. Wow, wow. And, and and then that saves from their tax liability. Yeah, so if they're um, so instead only. Yeah, so instead of paying Mr. IRS, yeah. it, you can use that um, tax benefit to offset your other passive, passive income. income. Mm. Or if you qualify as a real estate professional, you may... Um, a lot to offset your ordinary income. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's huge. That's a major so like, game changer. Your scenario, your wife is into real estate. Mm -hmm. She is probably already a full time real estate professional. You just need to talk to your CPA and then see if and she's like, qualified. Whatever you invest, whatever depreciable amount, you then can use that to offset awesome. your, your active income. Mm -hmm. Active income. My, my active. income. Yes. Yeah. Wow. But she has to be qualified as a real estate professional. Yep. So check with the, your CPA and yep. see if. It's you, not hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Hard. And, and then so. You know, one of the things also that we talked about behind the scenes that I wanted to make sure that I bring up as well is that this $77 million deal, um, one of the, the ways that you were able to get it was because this specific investor was looking to invest with minorities. Yes. Right? Can you talk a little bit about that? Basically, I mean, she would, I mean, basically the seller didn't say like it had to be a minority yeah. group to buy it, but she basically said like it would be a great idea if it was. Yeah. And yeah. like, I think like it goes back to what you said. It's literally illegal yeah. for most people to have access to these amazing opportunities. Yeah. And so for people of color, women to be able to have access to these type of deals, you're opening up 
an opportunity for a, a huge demographic of people who never otherwise would even be able to access these deals. Yeah, yeah. And wh while we have investors from every, basically every background, we do have a lot of minority investors. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is because they feel comfortable. Maybe they're a woman who feel more comfortable with women investors because they've yeah. never really met many. Yeah. Maybe they're just like, I just want to support you guys because of your mission, your yeah. impact story that you want to create. Yeah. So um, in general, in this line of business, we just need more diversity. Yeah, You're right. Because, because, because truthfully, um, real estate is a white male dominated industry yeah right we can anything just be, with money we can just be be 100 <laughs> percent honest like yeah. that's what it is you know yeah. and 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 just understanding that as think about it if majority of wealth is built with real estate and the real estate industry is majority <laughs> white male then that means and and if you're not a sophisticated investor, it's illegal for you to <laughs> partake in this. Partake in it. Y'all do the math. I'm not, oh, look, yeah. I'm not even going to say what I'm going to say, matter of <laughs> fact. You do the math, right? Yeah. Because, I, and, and, and that's the thing that I don't think people realize about laws, yeah. about who's in office, about systems, right? About the importance of um, breaking down the glass ceiling, right? Because yeah. think about this, for, for instance, too. Um, minus white males, even when you start putting minorities in there, mm -hmm. real estate is a majority male-dominated industry. Right. So now we have scenarios where um, a lot of women mm -hmm. are boxed out of, of, of wealth, yeah. connected to their relationship or whatever the case may be if they get a divorce now they don't understand they don't have the education yeah yes right they don't understand and so and so not only is this uh you know real estate important um or you know for our community minorities um to understand this because women should be investing you know you know uh, people of color should be investing but under but but first and foremost Get the education. Yep. Because if you if you don't come from something, you don't have the uh, you don't have the net worth yet. Mm -hmm. You don't have the the income yet. Mm -hmm. And so now the other way to get in, mm. right? Yep. The other way to get in to this wealth conversation yes. is through education. Definitely. Yeah. So talk 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 to us a little bit of, because because you guys do offer, um, you know. Uh, you know, classes, challenges, webinar, things that like, like, like you guys are really, really active in education. Talk a little bit about some of the initiatives you guys have going on. Yeah, I mean, essentially at the beginning, we were really like, so I think we came to talk about like, I, we think 10X is really easy than 2X. I, going back to our beginning, like beginning story, we started with a $6.9 million apartment and now we close a $77 million. It's a 10, 10 X jump. And mm. we realized in four and a half years, Wow! in four and a half years, $77 million to raise that money is 38 way, million. $38 million is way easier than we were raising 33.9 million dollars. Wow. Right. Amazing. So for us, we feel like we, um, we put a lot of emphasis on in education. Why was it easier? Track record, yep. operational excellence, like the mm. things that you we said to do to vet sponsors, mm. we started accumulating that. And so people were like, well, I've had past success. I'll refer my friends and families mm. or like they're legit people. Yeah. I spoke to their referrals. They're legit people. So like um, success begets risk success. Yeah. And that's why when you're the first in your family to ever do anything, yeah. it's the hardest. Right. And so for us, it becomes like it's a playbook. So we're like. Okay, this now, is what we now, do. Now it's like a mastery. Mm. We're like, hey, we want to put together a deal. Okay, this is what we this do. This is what we need to do. It's mm. like we, we have gained that mastery of putting together a large deal, raising money in difficult situation. The interest rate could keep climbing, but we still keep continuing to raise. So we have gained that mastery. And that's why it's so important that we pass that kind of to knowledge. knowledge to our listeners yeah. who, who can who can feel empowered that they can take control of their life because yeah. we at one point didn't know we had 
we could do that either. Yeah. We thought, hey, the only way to make money is to trade time for money. Yeah. And we're here to say, no, that's not the only way. Yep. Yeah. And we're the proof that two girls from California can be yep. owning big multifamily apartments yeah. out of state, out of state, yeah. in male-dominated industry. Yeah. What, what, what's the key? So I want to get, we inside the vault, right? So I want to get it like inside your brain for a second. Yeah. What's the, um, what's the key to your success? Mm. Would you say? Because, um, it almost feels like each time you start from nothing. Yes. Right. Whether it's no money, whether it's no relationship, yes. whether it's no apartments, con- apartments <laughs> right? Like you're starting from nothing. Um, but each time, the success happens like in a short period of time. So like three years. Wow, I love how you said this. Four, you know, four <laughs> years. Like, 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 what's like, what, what's happening? You know, what's what's in what's in the kiddie pool? As you know. So like, like honestly, the, I think we operate not from like from a place where we have no choice but to do it. Mm. Like a lot of time, like that's why we're so vocal about people should get started before you reach our end point. Like we always like. When we don't have money, like when we, we lost our customer, then we start pivoting. Yeah. We didn't grow our wealth while we have money. Mm. Or like, you know, like when we encounter this, we start doing. So for us, you need to get started before you come to like the end road like us. I think the, the thing that we have is we don't have fear. Mm. Because we, we understand like these, we don't, we do things, we get educated. We yeah. always get educated first. And so like when we, whatever we do, we we always, like, the Tony Robbins success loop, we've already created that in our mind. Mm. Like, we know we're going to succeed at this. Mm. It's just a matter of time. And the other thing is, like, that 10x is e- easier than 2x principle is really, really true because if we did everything ourselves, we would never get there. Mm. We leverage team yeah. and time from our other business as well, you saw. Yeah. We learned that, like, we can get further ahead in a compressed time frame if we just had the right partners, if yeah. we had the right team members to help us. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I would double down on leveraging um, everything, all the resources, and also don't feel stuck. You can feel stuck for a moment, but you have your whole you life. You have options. You yeah. have options, and that's why you have to learn how to pivot. Like, that's why when they're, like, like right now, the economic condition, it doesn't hurt us. It's actually for us to even buy more real mm-hmm. estate. When we put the right debt in place, when we put the right correct business plan, when you buy in the right sub-market, you're most likely will succeed. And this is like for us, this is our golden time to buy. Yeah. No, I love it. And so like if somebody wanted to like connect and get all of this (laughs) information, because I I, I promise you, I'll have y'all here for another two hours because I got a lot of questions. And I like I said, I I, I definitely need to, you know, get into multifamily apartments. But if somebody's looking, they, like they they want to they want to get in, they want to learn more. Like like where, where would they go? Yeah, yeah. So if you want to disconnect your income generation from time, and pay the least amount of taxes, you gotta get started in this multifamily game. And all you have to do is go to jumpstartapartments.com. Mm. Again, it's jumpstartapartments.com. And, and what and what's the what's the benefit, right? So you go to jumpstartapartments.com. Really. Um, they're leveraging your education, your connections, your, like, really helping on the education side yep. as yep. well. Yeah, and, like, what, what we've seen in the past is people were, like, amazed at the, the information that they're able to get. Um, they're able to ask some questions, things I'd like to clarify, because this is a brand new world for most people. Co- yeah. Jumping from single family to multifamily, there's a, there's a gap. Yeah. It, it sounds similar, people, it's residential spaces, but there's a huge gap of knowledge. And having people who, who've been there, who've, who've come from similar experience points will be really beneficial for people to like, okay. And like, use us as a jumping point. That's yeah. why it's called Jumpstart mm. Apartments. Yeah, you don't want to start from where we started, yeah. piggyback off of where we are at today mm. and all the trials and error we have made. So mm. now that you don't have to start from there, now you get to l- jump even faster mm. ahead. That's the point. Love it, love it. Insiders, jumpstartapartments.com. You got to get this education. Like, I swear, the light bulb moment of understanding how a lot of us are kept out of these wealth conversations legally Mm. because we don't have the knowledge. Now, as my brother Storm Leroy says, 
always seek knowledge. Now you can seek knowledge by making sure you tap in with the Kitty Sisters, Jumpstart, Apartments.com. Uh, if they wanted to connect with you, social media, yeah. where can they find you? Um, we're everywhere, the Kitty Sisters. Just yeah, on Instagram, YouTube, or listen to our podcast, Cashflow Multipliers. Yeah, so where we break down complex um, apartment investing and also business size of it to a more fun and relatable topic, yeah. and then you can easy consumable, um, consumable, and follow us along and take us on your walk or folding your laundry or driving your kids to school. Yep. All right, y'all. We are closing out the vault. Another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show <laughs> on the planet. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. Make sure you also join the Abundance Community. Go to AbundanceCommunity.org. We got more information behind the scenes, some gems that's, that they didn't even drop on the show that we're going to talk about. So go to AbundanceCommunity.org. Me, I am Ash Cash. Make sure you visit me, I am AshCash.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at I am Ash Cash. I will see you next time. Same time, same place, in God's will. Peace.